And uh, let's welcome our next uh, panel, uh, Wiki Love's Monument panel. <laughs> it is. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Monica Mora. I'm part of the International Committee of Wikilove's Monuments this year. I also organized the contest in my country, Panama, last year and this year again. Uh, Lodewijk and I are hosting a panel on Wikilove's Monuments, and I'm going to give you a brief presentation about Wikilove's Monuments so that we all know what it is about. So. Who um, in this room participated last year or know that your country participated last year? And what about this year? Watch. So it's almost the, the same size. Um, <laughs> that's good. So what is Wikilove's Monuments? It's a photo competition around cultural heritage monuments and it's organized in an open and federative way, meaning that countries get to organize most of the um, prizes and jury, and then following some international guidelines or general guidelines. So all the uploads go to Wikimedia Commons with, freely, with free licenses, and it has two stages. First, countries organize it locally, and they get to 
choose 10 winners, up to 10 winners, that then go to an international contest, which would be the second stage, and then a jury there, there it's in charge of choosing the winners globally, right? So what are the goals of the contest? Well, being organized by Wikimedians and people enthusiastic about free knowledge, well, the goals go towards getting more freely licensed pictures to, for Wikimedia Commons, right? And also get people familiar with Wikimedia Commons so they know that after, even after the contest, they can follow the contributions. Also facilitate the work of people that are hosting wiki projects related to heritage. And finally, serve as a tool for local chapters and groups to build capacity and reinforce community. So these are the general goals of the contest. So for those of you ha that have organized or are thinking about organizing it, there are five pillars that are mostly the philosophy of the contest. So I'm gonna go through them very quickly. The first one, the contest should be easy for people to participate. Um, no hard rules, no complicated rules. In, it also should be fun, for example, if there is someone that it's gonna be contributing for the first time on Wikimedia Commons, it's gonna be hard for them to know what category to put in the picture, so that's not fun. It should be local also, meaning that you should be able to photograph what is nearby your place. You should not have to go really far to be able to participate. And also help Wikipedia. We have found that people, even if maybe they, know, they feel that they are not professional, they are motivated by the fact that they can contribute to Wikipedia. So make sure you promote this widely in your contest. And also uh, quick and visible results, meaning that make sure that the pictures get used after the contest. Because for example, I love to take photographs and if I participate in this contest, I would love to see my pictures then being used in a Wikipedia article. So make sure that after the contest, you get them to some other wiki projects. So how the contest evolved? Well, in 2010, it was all only organized in the Netherlands. It was the first time. And it went very well. They received uh, more than 12,000 images by more than 200 participants. So that drew the attention of other countries who wanted to participate next year. And it was organized only in Europe by 18 countries. So the numbers got quite high, as you can see. And it got more interest, so last year, it was organized in 35 countries, in it went global. And also, well, the numbers also hi are higher. So this year, this is what the map looks like as of today. Um, there are almost more than 40 countries that are participating and up to 17, I think that are possibly or probably participating. So you can see that even Antarctica. And that contest is organized by Wikimedia Argentina in coordination with other volunteers from other countries. So we're very proud of that. So the ones that you see in pink are the ones that are probably or possibly participating. So what has been the impact? Well, it's more than we can actually measure, but we know for sure these three points, that there are more than 500,000 new pictures in Wikimedia Commons on cultural heritage monuments that can be used under free, free licenses. That there are two, or maybe one official or one still to confirm, um, Guinness record as the largest photography contest in the world in terms of number of pictures. So,
and also the new contributors to Wikimedia Commons. And just to finish, I'm going to show you two um, very uh, brief tables. The one is the new participants per year. So these are people that never uploaded to Wikimedia Commons before the contest each year. So that went up to 71% last year. We expect this year it's even higher. And finally, from those new participants, um, how many of them have edited in the last six months? So we can argue there is um, approximately 4% of retention rate of the new participants. So um, taking into account this is very recent, at least the statistic for last year might be lower um, as the time passes. So it was a very quick presentation because all the discussion is going to take place with our guests. Um, finally, I, as a personal experience, I can tell you that it doesn't take too much to organize this as long as Benoit said it's multi, there is motivation. For example, in my country, the community wasn't so strong. I, we didn't have too much experience editing Wikipedia, and it went very well um, in our terms. So that's it for that, this part. So maybe Lodewijk can introduce the next part, which is the panel. Well, thank you very much, Monica. <clears throat> Well, please join us as well, of course. Yeah. Um, so we have a very interesting panel, I think, of uh, people who organized uh, Wikilas monuments in their country, all over the world, um, with very different backgrounds. Um, I would like to ask everyone to introduce themselves very quickly. Um, I am myself, I'm Lodewijk Glauf. I've been uh, helping with we organizing Wikilas monuments since 2010, the first competition in the Netherlands. Um, I've helped organize it in the Netherlands, but also on an international level in the past, uh, in the past years, of course. Um, I did it uh, together with uh, lots of other people, uh, so please don't think that it's just me, because that's a misunderstanding uh, sometimes made. But it's hundreds of volunteers, and I think that is the big power behind uh, Wikilas Monuments. Benoit Rochon from, Ghana, from Canada. <laughs> Wrong one. Uh, <coughs> I'm a very fan of pictures, like I said, and uh, I, I, sorry. I love to organize uh, these things. I, want, I, I forgot to say something a little earlier, is uh, R Richard, uh, which is Ferris. He always starts something great. If you want to make something work in your country, you follow Richard's step, Lodovic, well, everybody here on the table, fo follow what, what's happening. It's very great and it's going to work. That's what I did. Hi, my name is, is this thing working? Yeah. Okay. My name is Dumisani. I'm from Wikimedia South Africa. I'm the current president of Wikimedia South Africa. I started editing, editing in 2008, mainly on Wikiversity. Then I moved on to my language, Wikipedia. And uh, last year we got involved and organized the first Wikilabs monument in South Africa with a, a great team. Go to our webpage and you can see all the guys that were there that did the, the Nice work there, and that was a collaboration with uh, Wiki Africa Center, which Isla is uh, head of, and uh, we did very good work there. And this year is going to be even bigger and better. And I brought the Vuvuzela so that the teddy bear can play with. Hello, that's work. That's working. Yes, uh, nice uh, being here. Uh, my name is John Fred. Uh, I'm from France. I serve on the board of the French chapter and I'm involved in Wikimedia Commons. And I've been an organizer of uh, Wikilabs Monuments in France since uh, 2011, so that's the third year we're gonna make it. And just as a lot of us, this is just, this is not only me, there are many volunteers involved. And uh, this is mandatory, so this is one <laughs> of the French mascots. And uh, by our bylaws, we have to bring our mascots to presentations and present them, so uh, please make a good um, uh, welcome to him. Percy, well, yes. Hi, I'm Christian from uh, Italy. I'm uh, vice president of Wikimedia Italia, the local chapter, and uh, we tried to have uh, Wikilabs monuments in Italy in 2011, but we have a really complicated and 
crappy law in Italy, so we didn't make it in 2011, so we did it in 2012. It uh, went very well because we had to start from the ground up, and in many sense. And uh, then in 2013, uh, I joined the Wikidos Monument International team, and so please ask any question. Hi, my name is Carmen Alcazar. I'm from Mexico. Um, <laughs> and I'm Ivan Martinez, president of Wikimedia Mexico, and we'll be very surprised and pleased by the response of people in our country. The past year, we received a lot of photos, and it was a great experience, uh, and we, we want to share it in, in this panel. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for the introductions. So, what I would like to ask is people who are sitting in the back, please come a, a bit up front and just let us sit a bit closer together. Um, it, I think it's good um, if uh, we have an open discussion that people from the audience participate as well. Um, so, if you have questions, um, you will definitely have a chance for asking them. If we run out of time, just find one of us after the discussion and uh, you will definitely be uh, more than welcome to ask them. Um, and if you have answers, uh, please also share them. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we do have some backup questions here, but what I really would like to do is uh, give you the opportunity as the audience to, uh, to first at least give a few questions. If something is burning, is there really something you really would like to know about Wikilos Monuments uh, or of one of these specific uh, panel members? Is, is there a portable microphone? Hi, um, I have a question. I know that um, the keystone of the of the competition is the is the list that you get from municipals or, or, or national government or heritage organisations. But um, within Africa, I know that there's a lot of um, countries, and I can't imagine that it's only specific to Africa that don't necessarily have those lists yet, or it's difficult to to um, manage to get them. And I wondered if it was possible to run Wiki Loves Monuments without, without a specific list, you know, with a, a collective list, or does it have to be official? Uh, I'm uh, always the one answering that question because in Italy we have the very same problem in the sense uh, that uh, uh, we have a lot of monuments and nobody wants to catalog them. And also because uh, sometimes uh, some, somebody says it's a state uh, duty to catalog them. No, it's a regional duty. No, it's a province duty. And so uh, in the long run, we don't have any <laughs> list at all. <laughs> and so this was a problem for us. Um, also because uh, in Italy there is uh, from the government much emphasis on what are the minor monuments in the sense that everybody knows that Italy has uh, the Leaning Tower, the Colosseum, uh, and uh, many other uh, big monuments in big cities, but uh, there are also a lot of so-called minor monuments. And when we made an agreement with the, with the ministry, they asked us to leave out of the competition the uh, big cities like Rome, Milan, Venice, Turin, and focus on the minor monuments. But obviously, N n the, a list of minor monuments does not exist because nobody wants to choose what is minor or what is not minor. So, uh, to cut it uh, really short, the point of uh, having lists is uh, that uh, uh, if a monument is uh, on a government list, uh, it is pr very probably encyclopedic. So, since the end goal of Wikilos Monuments is to help Wikipedia, it's good to have a starting point uh, of uh, photos of uh, monuments that you are pretty sure that are encyclopedic. Maybe they don't have yet an article, but probably uh, uh, if, they, if you get the image, if you get interest uh, around those monuments, you will get one. So uh, if you can obtain some kind of official list, 
be, be it a government list or be it a university list. Uh, some, uh, I don't know, if maybe your country has uh, some uh, university or some uh, pool of professors uh, which are uh, uh, experts in uh, heritage that uh, compile such a list of monuments, you can use those. The, the point, the, the line that I would draw uh, around uh, this list is if you can use this list as a source on Wikipedia to, to tell, hey, this monument is encyclopedic because it is on this list, I think that that list is encyclopedic. Uh, in Italy, we have another, another problem, which was this authorization thing, that to take a photo of a monument, you need a specific authorization from uh, the, either the government or the uh, owner of the, of the monument. And uh, so we decided to put our uh, monuments list in uh, the Wikipedia namespace, not in the article. But the point is that the list should be themselves encyclopedic. Uh, I know that uh, in, on other Wikipedias, like the Spanish Wikipedia, they um, don't like to have the list on the on the article namespace, so they have a special namespace for that. So just adapt to what is your situation in your Wikipedia, but the point is to have uh, encyclopedic uh, uh, things, both the list and the monuments on them. So oh, thank you. So it's, if not, not the government, find another source. Okay, thanks a lot. The gentleman over there. Hello, uh, my name is Diego. Um, my username is Poco Poco. I am very active in Commons, uh, nominate a lot of stuff in uh, feature pictures. I also, I also organized in the contest in Spain and was part of the jury last year. My question is, um, I was pretty surprised that a lot of the pictures, pictures that won last year did not made it through the feature uh, featured picture process in, in common, so um, some people had the impression the quality was a bit low. So I checked your website to say you are looking for original pictures, useful pictures, and quote, good quality pictures. But um, my question concretely is, are you planning to match the criteria, especially for quality picture, uh, for the quality of the pictures to that from commons? Because I think commons is very detailed. It's, it's, uh, it's well defined, and I have the impression that for uh, Wikilabs monuments is quite open. I think uh, we can answer the question in, in, in two parts. Um, first, I will quickly try to explain um, what our criteria were, and then I asked Jean Fred to reply to your initial question, why the pictures didn't make it through the featured process. Um, so the original idea was indeed that there were three criteria, um, usefulness, uh, originality and technical quality, the technical quality being the closest to the, the very specific criteria and objective criteria of Wikimedia Commons, I think. Um, how, and we didn't specify with numbers like it has to contain at least so many pixels or anything, because we wanted to have, make it really easy for people to participate. We wanted to lower the threshold as much as possible so that more people would participate, that they wouldn't feel held back because their image was a few pixels too low, or uh, because if for some picture, for a lot of monuments, a picture is better than no picture, and even if it's a very bad picture, it's, it it gives you an image of the monument. Um, however, we did tell the ju the international jury, and we also put that on the on the jury page on of our website, that um, they should keep the criteria of Wikimedia Commons for the featured picture process in mind in their judging. So please try to keep these criteria as a guideline for the technical quality. Um, so it was not totally out of the uh, scope of the judging process, but it was not a, a binary uh, criterion. I, there are several questions in your questions and I'm probably uh, forgetting half of it by the end of my answer, so don't hesitate to reiterate them. Uh, I think one was that during, uh, we were not encouraging quality enough in the submissions. Um, oh, and I'm sorry because these discussions have uh, occurred on Wikimedia Commons as well, and I followed them uh, and a bit participated in too. Um, I think that's a fair criticism, because if you actually see uh, the um, uh, pictures that get uploaded, 
you've got lots of awesome stuff and uh, really awesome stuff. And you've got also like lots of crap, obviously. And you have in the middle lots of okay pictures that are perfect for encyclopedic articles. And uh, some, many people said, us, but why don't you just point people to the quality image guideline on comments? So on comments, we've got several processes to recognize the quality of images. So featured pictures are uh, very good images with a wow effect, and quality images are images that respect uh, a, a list of technical criteria. And so it both are assessed by fellow Wikimedians. Um, so the answer is, last time I checked, the quality image guidelines were at least eight spaces, uh, eight screens of uh, technical information. So that probably like 10 or 12 pages. I'm not sure we want our users, our Wikilos Monuments participants to go, to force them to go through this. Uh, that being said, somebody, some people said, you should, you probably can make a short tutorial of, don't hold your camera like this if you're trying to, to get picture of a monument or wait for the car to, to go past the monument before you photograph it or maybe check the white balance of your picture so you don't have a yellow monument when it's supposed to be red. Um, I'm, I'm open to any suggestions to how we can make that work better in the workflow, keeping in mind that what Lodewijk said, that it has to be uh, a very simple and having a low threshold. A uh, second thing is why the winning pictures are not necessarily featured or not. Uh, that depends totally on the country and the juries. For example, in the uh, last um, uh, competition in France, uh, the jury was, um, we had external people, which had also a, a very strong presence of French contributors um, active on the featured and quality image process. So they kept that a lot in mind in their, um, in their selections. I, my guess is that all the jury were a bit more into that uh, sort of thinking when they selected the pictures, they were like, I don't know, the war effect or whatever. And that's why there were less images that were, uh, uh, pictures in country X were not uh, featurable per Wikimedia Commons criteria. So I think that's just uh, the choosing of the jury. And we can improve by um, getting more comments involved, but keep in mind that Wikilas Monuments is not only about, as I said, like the common standards and the high common standards, but also about engaging users with may have a crappy camera and not a lot of technical skills. Does that answer your question? Yes, one last question. Do you have a decision also in the jury? <laughs> there is an yes, outstanding request. If you have jury suggestions, please email me or find me. Sure. That's, an out, that's an open question. If you have any ideas for jury members, just contact me. Uh, I'm Jaken. I'm, I'm a CISOP on Italian Wikipedia and on Wikimedia Commons. And I was in the Italian jury, uh, so I can tell you how we worked. Uh, I believe that we, we didn't really care if it, there was some, uh, the image was a bit unfocused, just a bit unfocused. While on Commons, they care for it a lot. We, uh, we looked for photos that were, I mean, cool. I mean, and then if we didn't really care to go to see the little detail. So. That's why the, the, some photos we won the contest, but they couldn't get become a feature picture or even quality picture. And I don't think that this is really a problem. I mean, they are two different things. And also, you must consider that we, we were four or five people, and not all, not all of them were Wikimedians, and we, we, we cannot pretend that they value that they that they consider the exact uh, uh, the, the requisite for feature picture. I mean, they, one was a photographer, one was um, um, a photo, uh, photo editor. Okay, they know, they have an idea of what a good picture is or what, what so we cannot just say, no, you have to, to respect the value that, uh, of commons. Okay, thank you. Is there someone, f uh, because I w want to give especially the microphone now to someone from a team that has not organized it yet. Someone who wants to organize Wikilos Monuments, but didn't, wasn't able to do it yet. And that has a question. Hi, um, I'm Jack from Singapore. Um, yes, we've never organized this because there are very few volunteers in Singapore at the moment. Um, I, I'm a little bit confused about the difference between Wikilos Monuments and Wikilos Public Art. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, Wikilos Monuments starts with some list of monuments and you essentially assign people or get people to choose which monuments they wish to take pictures of, is that how it works? Whereas Wikilos Public Art, it's just go and find it 
it's there, and if you come back with some public art, then, then great, and there's no list. Is that how it works, or am I not understanding how this works? Well, yeah, the, the basically the difference, obviously the monuments, there are lists coming from governments, so you, you can go around that. Public art, there's, is there a list? I saw, John, that you had lists in some countries. Uh, I don't know what is the case in Singapore, but in Canada there is no list for that. Yeah. Yes, and and this is this is one of the most important thing w with Wikilaw's monuments is you have really have to use the government list. I think we have a language problem here. When we say monuments, we mean historical buildings. That's like Dunglish or something like that. So you're probably probably with British, so you think of a monument of an old statue or something like that. That might be a monument, but like. Yeah. So lots of old buildings. And that's a monument, and with public art, you have, you know, what uh, John showed of. So the scope is quite different. I, mi I might want to add also something in some countries where the freedom of panorama, panorama is, in the case of Canada, and I think a couple countries in Europe, same thing. 3D, you're allowed. 2D, you're not. So painting on the walls, things like that, that won't work. It, it's basically it's basically free for all. So you, if you can even take 100 pictures of the same monument, and that that's even I mean we last year we got f more than 500 images of the Taj Mahal. I mean, yeah. No. You can always but make. Uh, just to add to talk about that that point, yes, that's that's probably what will happen. That many people will take the ones closer to closest to them, or the one that, that, that they like, or that they think will have a, a chance to to read. But uh, the same thing happened in South Africa, where a lot of people would take monuments of unions building, or the Fort Trekker monument, or the language monument. So what we did is to run a social media page along with that and suggest areas where they can go to get further um, pictures for the monuments. And also to use the mobile app um, to, to show them where possible monuments would be for them to go and find these monuments and uh, use them. So there's a, there's a lot of organization you can do along that to counter that problem. Okay, hello, I'm uh, from Greece, and of course we have a lot of monuments, but uh, we have uh, similar problem, bro problems with Italy. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Ministry of uh, Culture uh, has uh, restrictions on uh, photographs of uh, monuments. Mm. For many monuments you need uh, an approval in, in advance to photograph them, and for all monuments uh, you need uh, to pay some, in fact, copyright fees uh, to publish photographs of uh, ancient monuments, you cannot sublicense them, and uh, if you publish them, you cannot uh, publish them. F uh, if you don't like to pay copyright fees, you cannot publish them for uh, commercial uses. So, how did the Italians <laughs> pass around this? Okay, c can you try to give the one-minute summary? Because I know it, it can be a 30-minute presentation. Yeah, yeah, it, it can be. Uh, actually, this story starts back. <laughs> okay, no, I will cut it short. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we tried in 2011, like at uh, the beginning of 2011, to uh, organize Wikilos Monuments in Italy. We also get, got in touch with the ministry, with some part of the ministry, and didn't mm, work in the end, uh, so the, the next year, uh, 2012, we uh, asked for consultancy from the uh, NEXA, Politecnico of Torino um, sc School of Law, which uh, is also the uh, um, institution in Italy who runs Creative Commons I Italia. Um, they have a group of lawyers, very skilled people that mm, know everything. They, they draft the Italian version of, uh, 
of uh, Creative Commons, and uh, we hired the one of them and uh, said uh, to her, go to the ministry and try to convince them to uh, make to, to help us with uh, we close mon monuments. The, the problem was that we were not even aware if in our law we could do Wikilove's monuments at all because we, we had all the same restrictions as you, as you have in Greece. And as, as far as I know, they have the same situation also in Egypt. And um, the, the point is it took, it took a very long time because uh, uh, we signed this agreement with the ministry at uh, uh, like around the 15th of September 2012 with the contest already running. Mm -hmm. So uh, for us, the, the, first, the first element is time, Ta a lot of time, a lot of effort in this. Um, and, but I would suggest uh, try to find a, um, an expert to work on this because otherwise uh, you will uh, run uh, into, into complications, and if you have some expert people, they can push your, this, uh, your, your arguments better. And uh, also, in the end, we, uh, in our agreement, uh, had um, to add a special disclaimer saying this is a protected monument under Italian law, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you want to reuse this uh, photograph, uh, you have to ask for permission again, because this is what the Italian law requires. It, this is a non-copyright restriction. This does not depend on the copyright of the photo, but on the fact that the photo displays a monument. And this brings, uh, it's like uh, for uh, personality rights. If the photo has uh, the, the face of a person in it, it has a lot of more rights uh, attached. And many people were saying, ah, but this is not uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, attributions share alike. You cannot put it on Commons. And then we, had, we, we could reply, well, we have Creative Commons Italy people, lawyers that told us that this is compatible with Creative Commons okay. attribution share alike. Mm -hmm. So I will suggest you get in touch with the expert, play, plan to put a lot of time into this. Okay. So it, because it's very country dependent as well. Yes, right? yes, yeah. it's, it's complicated. Okay. Is there an, another question? Because I think I you should definitely get in touch with each other during yes, the break. Yes, yes. I That's invite uh, you to. Hi. Thanks for having this panel and sharing your experiences with us. Now, looking forward. There are several teams, I think, trying to or thinking of organizing other international photo contests, and I guess there will be another Wiki Loves Monuments contest next year. What are the three main insights you had or recommendations you would give to future organizing teams, uh, both at the international level and at the national level for the local teams? Um, well, in Mexico, uh, the, the local experience was very richful, uh, but uh, all the all, all the contests maybe uh, will be defined by the list. It is a particular risk in all. I think in all the in all the countries, because uh, all the efforts that you can do for the contest depends extremely in the risk of you have the authorization or not of the of the list and for us is the in sometimes was deeply frustrating uh, move all the topics related to the contest uh, sponsorings press uh, money uh, grants uh, the international part of, of coordination with the with the uh, international jury and all the things, but if one person or, or one ministry uh, decides if the weekly of monuments can occur in, in your country, I think uh, this is uh, the, the most uh, uh, particular uh, 
issue in, in, in Mexico. But all the, uh, all, all the other things was very amazing. Uh, we saw uh, the, we saw too much people interested in uh, contribute with their, with their own photos to a house uh, who are, uh, we, we have the prices until one month before uh, we announce the, the the prices of the contest in September, middle of September, and the people uh, joined to the contest uh, uh, without prices, uh, and uh, we, we are very happy for for that thing. Uh, the people are uh, are contributing only with good faith in the, in the contest. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this is not uh, this is not a recommendation, uh, but. Uh, uh, a strong recommendation is have, uh, like Christian says, time, the time uh, six months at least of uh, after the contest, uh, and you, uh, you you can uh, you, uh, you can ask to other uh, photo, uh, photography contest in Mexico. We asked uh, recently for the for the edition of this year. We asked the volunteers and the organizers of another uh, small uh, photograph contest, and they are uh, growing the organization through volunteers. And but uh, the the recommendation of Mexico is uh, uh, have too much time for the plan uh, in the planning uh, of the of the contest. We, we, because uh, the bureaucracy can be very hard, very, very hard in, in, in these things. And maybe you can go forward good with another things, but if you don't have the authorization, the, the contest, maybe we don't, you don't have contest in, in the country. We start in March, maybe the, fir the first sketch in March, uh, and we are we're preparing now the contest, the final things of the contest. But I think March, where we are, uh, we have the, the first meetings, uh, talking uh, talking the, 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 the edition of of, of Wikilove's monuments this year. But I think six months, it's a, a good amount of, of time. Bueno, lo voy a decir en español y me van a ayudar con la traducción. Eh, yo creo que lo principal es tener, obviamente, los listados de la dependencia, pero eh, también te sirve, como decía Cristian, acercarte a universidades. Nosotros en algún momento pensamos hacer el concurso con no todos los monumentos en México. ¿Quiere decir traducción? She's saying, but the, the main thing is the list. Uh, get the list, get the organized list, and maybe you can reach an, uh, universities and... Pensamos eh, hacer la, el concurso con algunos monumentos que vienen en libros o que nosotros sabíamos que ya eran monumentos, los más turísticos. Eh, México tiene 110 mil monumentos históricos. Eh, 900 son abiertos al público y todo el mundo sabe que son monumentos. Pensamos en un momento hacerlo nada más con esos, pero ayudó a eh, amenazar a, a la dependencia o decirle, vamos a hacerlo con estos. In the worst plan, you can make your own uh, list of the most popular monuments of your country. Uh, when we don't have the list of the World of the Ministry, uh, we, we make a, a list of, of the 100 popular monuments in, the, in, all, Mex in all the Mexican states. And we, uh, we uh, go to the ministry uh, and push too much and uh, strongly, strongly push, uh, forget the list. Y bueno, mi consejo último es, si tú tienes como algún listado, si tienes cinco o diez personas que puedan ayudarte a ser voluntarios, armar un sitio de internet y tres premios, creo que son los requerimientos mínimos para poder organizar el concurso de una forma modesta, tal vez, pero que te va a hacer camino para el siguiente año 
ya te diste a conocer, ya hubo medios que informaron del concurso y el siguiente año puedes presionar con esto a las dependencias para que te den los listados y hacer un concurso más grande. Maybe you can go uh, make a small wiki of monuments with prizes, with lists, with some volunteers, some uh, uh, maybe media advices, and uh, you are uh, paving the road for a make a more uh, bigger wiki of monuments the next year uh, with prizes, some prizes. Uh, you can uh, go a contest, a small contest. Okay. Are there any other questions? Up there. Hi, uh, Douglas Gott here from uh, Wikimedia South Africa. I just want to ask you a question about um, using the competition as a means of connecting with uh, other Wikimedians within your respective countries. So to what extent did running this competition have any noticeable impact on, say, increasing membership of, say, local chapters, increasing number of uh, editors on Wikipedia or the Wiki Commons, contributors to Wiki Commons? Um, what, what sort of impact did it have in terms of volunteerism for you guys going forward in the future? And were you able to measure that? Is there, um, w I think in, as a, in a general sense, I think Monica already gave some of the numbers, maybe we can even pull them up, um, of, of the editor retention, of the number of people that are still contributing after several years. So I think that, is, that gives some kind of indication. Is that what you're referring to? Okay. So I think that at the local level we don't have the exact numbers because the fact that any country can organize it very in an open way, it also makes it difficult to gather all the information from each country at the end. But I think there are quite a few nice experiences that at least we know about um, of some countries that have used this um, as a means to um, gather volunteers that maybe they don't edit Wikipedia, but they love photography, they love heritage, and they just contribute to the contest because of this. Um, a specific examples um, maybe can be, I don't know, from the panel, Even if, you know, even if I don't want to speak uh, always and always. Uh, um, in Italy, we had a uh, uh, really amazing thing that uh, we had a good, uh, I don't know for, <laughs> it was a kind of a miracle, we had a really huge press uh, launch at around uh, April or, or May, in the sense that in the same week, like uh, three or four uh, newspaper, even one, pretty big national newspaper, talked about Wikilos monuments. Because we were starting to say, okay, we are going to do this this year. And in, in the time we, are, we were still in the beginning with the conversation with the ministry, so we had some sort of backup plan like, okay, if we cannot do this, we are going to make a fuss about it. Like uh, we wanted to do this and they didn't allow us to do. So this is a good B plan. Uh, but uh, we had this huge launch and uh, um, at some point later, uh, some people showed up, completely non-Wikimedians, non non-Wikipedians, saying, wow, this is a cool idea, I want to do that for the monuments in my city. And they organized everything, by, pretty much everything by themselves. They contacted us and they say, told us, okay, what sh uh, should we do to participate in the national contest? And then we explained them this authorization thing and, the thing and what they should ask to their local authorities to get this authorization. And so I would, uh, uh, I would say, put some effort into communicate with those monuments because I think the one of the most important things of the contest is, it is simple, it is also, I, for Italy, it was too simple <laughs> because it's uh, about monuments, about Wikipedia, so we got a lot of people going around uh, and fo uh, taking photos of the Colosseum, which was not in the list and was not participating in the cost. So, But it is simple. People uh, love to take photographs. Uh, 
uh, people love the idea, and, uh, and I think this was one big point that uh, Lodewijk and Jean-Fred were telling about keep it simple. And uh, in this way, if you can reach out with the press, you can uh, mm -hmm. have some... <coughs> As Christian mentioned, help. the press is very important. This is the most important part, in fact, uh, that you really need to <laughs> outreach people. For in example, in India, it was like 2,000 person who actually participate. It's a, s a record by far. By far, so what, what is the second one? I, th I think the second one. USA. I think the second one was the US, but I'm not 100% sure. It's, I don't know for yeah. sure. But I think it was, I mean, it was like at least 1,000 less. I mean, it was a huge difference. And, and I think they even, uh, in the end, uh, an Indian picture got the first prize. Yeah. Um, and I th uh, he was also here at Wikimania because that was the main prize. And um, <laughs> so that was great, and and he, they even made it uh, to the to the like the, the the backside page of the of the Hindu, which is like a major newspaper in India. So uh, if you're talking about PR and reaching out to people, I think uh, we definitely succeeded in that in uh, multiple countries. And if I may, also if you go on wikilovesmonuments.org, the international website, Lodovic posts something like a week or two weeks ago. There's a guy who like gather a whole bunch of statistics. It's very interesting to see that, to see the retention and, and everything. You, you gotta see that. Okay. We only have a few more minutes, so uh, are there some short questions? Short answers, yeah. <laughs> questions with short answers, let's put it that way. Hello, Susanna. Ideally, uh, yes, no. Well, actually, what I have to say are not really questions. I just want to make some comments uh, about some... Hello? Yeah, that's good. Like this? Yes. <laughs> Just like to make some comments regarding some of the previous questions. Uh, one has to do with the quality of the pictures. Um, what we were thinking of doing next time in, uh, Portugal participates in Wikilove's monuments is to eliminate the price for the quantity. Uh, what happened with us is that um, two or three of the contributors were in a great competition and they were at three o'clock in the morning taking pictures of every monument and they were all out of focus and I think uh, one of the good ideas is to um, keep the quantity out. Another thing also uh, about um, the list of monuments and what monuments can be photographed, I think next time we will also eliminate some of the monuments that already have hundreds of pictures so that not only the, these monuments get pictures, but also other monuments that are not so known. And also another thing I would like to mention is that I don't know if it works well in all countries to have this competition every year, but I would say at least for Portugal, uh, it, would, it would not have the same impact if you would make it every year. So it depends on, I don't know, cultural issues probably, but I would say maybe every two years, Otherwise, people get tired of it and just don't care about it anymore. Okay, maybe I can ask a question to the audience very quickly. What would be the next Wiki Loves? I mean, what do you think if you have to choose a small topic, a small niche, what would be a nice next topic? Botany. Botany? Just shout it out. Botany? Insects? Zoos. Wikilove's zoos. So basically, Wikilove's animals. And, and, and are people considered animals? Wikilove's <laughs> cats. had a question since the beginning, I think. Okay, yes. See, the microphone here. Okay, performing arts. Natural, also like Wikilove's earth? Okay, okay, final question uh, for James, and yep. I think then we have to wrap up. So this, is, this should be pretty straightforward, but uh, so in the United States, we have the National Register of Historic Places. That's the basis of our list. Um, and what I'm trying to focus on is to encourage people to take pictures of monuments that do not already have pictures. And it's pretty easy to look at if you look at the articles. But the thing is, we have like hundreds of articles that are just these lists of different states, counties, uh, cities have multiple articles, for example. So what I'm wondering is if, it's an e if there's an easy way to just compile a list of 
all the places that do not yet have pictures? So, so part of the uh, magical technical thing is that behind Wicked House Monuments, your lists are harvested by there's a bot who harvests the list and puts that in a gigantic uh, monuments database, which uh, is kind of crazy how many monuments we have in that now. And it's easy, uh, air quotes, to uh, build tools to, hey, give me all the monuments with no photos in the province of X. And you can make that, you, you are, there is an API, you can totally make that sort of request. The, the downside is you do have to make some tools. So there are tooling available. Um, um, people, volunteers build tools, the international team coordinates the efforts. So the tool it might not exist, but it might be possible to make one. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, and um, thank you for being here.